Welcome to my video on assembling the Simple Sugobot EV3 version. You see I have all the parts laid out in front of me here according to the diagram on the back of assembly guide. Um, so I'm going to push them all aside now and start working through the manual. So if I collect the parts that I need, I need two large white L's, four large blue pegs and two of the small blue pegs that have a plus on the ends of them. And I need two motors and eventually I'll attach this to the brick. So the first thing to do is to lay them out as shown in the picture and you can see that if we take the large blue pegs, take the short end of each blue peg, put it in a hole in the motor. You notice that I'm holding these as mirror images to each other so that the red drive wheels are on the outside. And I take the small blue peg and put it in the middle hole, making sure that the pluses line up. Whoopsie. All right, now when they're in that position, my third step in the assembly diagram is to take the L, take the short end of the L, place it down over the blue pegs with the long leg at the front near the red wheels. So they're on firmly. And then finally, I'll take my brick, I'll hold it like in the picture. So at the end that has the, the buttons, I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to put the blue pegs into the holes so that the white L points forward. And then we have step one. So for step two, here is step two. I need two of the long, I need two of the long beams. These are 15 hole beams and I need 12 black double studs or pegs, whichever you like to use. So there's my 12 and the assembly is straightforward. I take these pegs and I put one in each of the holes on the motors. And once I've got all the pegs in, I then put the motor braces on. Now at this point, you see that this motor, is, motor mount is pretty solid. So that's step two. Step three is the wheels. So I'm going to push these out of the way here. So for these, I need the two wheels. And you'll notice that the wheels, have, the two sides are different on the wheels. One is sort of hollow, and one has got the, uh, the holes that poke out on this side. Uh, this is the uh, sorry. This is the side that we're going to use, the one where you can see the spokes. So I need four blue pegs to the side. I need the two small wheels, and I need two black axles that are six Lego studs long. You can tell six studs because it's the same as six holes. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need two of those. Okay, so there's a little trick here in assembling this. Um, oh, I still have forgot some of my parts here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, so I take a wheel. And if I look at the wheel, I can look at the plus hole in the middle. And you'll see that two of the points of the plus point directly to holes, and two of them point between holes. So the trick is that the two holes that the plus flats point to, I'm going to leave blank. And the other four holes, I'm going to put a peg in. Black peg. And then I'm going to put the axle in to follow it. Once again, at the point, I can see that the two flats of the axles point to the empty holes. So now I can take a wheel and lining it up the same way with the flats of the plus sign pointing at the holes, I can slide it over the top, slide it down, push it in. If this piece does not fit in, it means you haven't matched up uh, the correct holes. So you may need to pop it out again and rearrange the pegs to match the, the holes. Once I've done that, then I can take the blue pegs, long side first, put them in the two remaining holes. That wheel is done. So I'm going to take, do the same with the other wheel, identify the holes that are in line with the flats, put the four pegs in the other two, the other four holes. Oopsie. Take my black axle, push it in so it just is flush on the other side. Take my 
um, wheel, find the holes that line up with the flats, pop that in, put my two blue, blue pegs in, and then my wheels are ready to be securely mounted. So to mount those wheels, that's the final step. I turn my robot upside down, I point the feet away from me, and then I can push this in. Now you'll also notice you've got the same alignment. You need to line it up so the blue pegs line up with holes here. In fact, oh look, it works either way. Interesting. Slow him in, and now these are firmly mounted. And that is uh, step three completed. So for step four, we're gonna mount the rear wheel. So we need a small wheel, we need two pegs and then another four pegs. We need the two small gray pieces that have two round holes in one direction and one plus hole in the other direction. They're kind of like a dark gray color. And then we need a red beam that is seven holes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And we need an axle. The axle is the number five axle, it's gray. And if you measure it, it measures five holes long. One, two, three, four, five, right there. So the easiest way to do this is to start by putting um, pegs on the outer holes, leave a gap, and then put the next one in. So it's peg, hole, peg, hole, peg, hole, peg. Okay? Now we'll assemble the wheel. Oh, I forgot my two little yellow pieces. Here they are. All right, so I put the axle through the wheel, put a yellow piece on either side. This is called a half bushing. And we take the gray pieces and we take the plus hole and put it onto the gray axle, pointing in the same direction. Then we take two pegs and put them in the end holes. All right, so we take our robot. We identify the correct end. So in this case, the end that we want it is the end that has a little Lego symbol. It's actually the back of the robot. So the first thing we do is we put in this assembly and then we can place this guy in on top of it. At which point the wheel should spin, and now we have a robot that can stand up. That is the end of step four. Step five, we are gonna mount the sensor pegs. So we need two blue pegs and six black pegs. All right, so let's do these one at a time. So let's take four pegs and fill in the outside two holes on either side. So this one and this one. So now we have two blues and two blacks remaining. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them in these white pieces and the black peg is gonna go in the first available hole right next to the motor. And then the blue peg is gonna go in the next hole, short end in. There's a little bit of confusion in the next couple pages of the manual, so we need to be careful here. So in this case, the, blue pe the black, blue, and then there's two spare holes. If you see a picture of the manual that only has one hole, it's wrong. All right, so this piece is now ready to go. So that's step five. Step six, you're actually gonna attach the sensor mounts. So I need two white L's, large L's, and two red L's, the small L's, and I need a couple of pegs. There we go. All right, so if we turn the robot upside down, if we have a look at these side pieces here, and we take a peg, it's easier this way. If we take the, the red peg, we're gonna put the short end of the, the, red, the red L on these two pegs here. And it's gonna be pointing down and the, the long piece of the L is gonna start at the blue peg. We'll do that again, right, right here. So it's facing down away. And then we're gonna take the black peg, we're gonna miss a hole and put the peg in there. So we've allocated somewhere to mount our sensor, and we're gonna do the same on the other side. Miss a hole, put the peg in. So that's the side mounts. Then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna put the uh, eye mounts on. So we put these in, short end of the L gets attached to the robot, and we have it so that it's all the way to the outside. So we don't even use those middle two holes, so it's kind of like crab claws in the front here. Okay. So that's step six. Step seven. So we need the sensors, there's our two line sensors and our eye sensors. We need the two mounting axles. Now these are actually four holes long, but they have a flat on the end to stop them from going all the way through the hole. And then we have a short sensor cable. Uh, compare this with a long sensor cable, all right, it's a short one. And to make it a lot easier, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna plug this into the sensor first. So we snap him in there. 
All right, so he's ready to mount. So we're going to take our robot and we're going to drop these axles in the second hole from the front. Not the front hole, but the next one in. And then we're going to put our fingers on those so we can tip them upside down. And then we're going to use that to mount our sensor. Now to make it easier to mount it, once again, we're going to plug it in. The sensor plugs into the, the, the sensor number two. If you have a look underneath, there's one, two, three, four, number two. So it's attached. So now what we have to do is line it up with little plus signs. You have to jiggle them a little bit and then push it down. Now, once again, you'll notice that we have missed the front set of holes completely. So we actually assembled that in slightly back from the front of the robot. And we can pull this cable out of the way here if we like. I'm pulling the cable underneath the robot. Okay, so that's there. And then what we're gonna do is we are gonna mount the line sensors on the side. So you see we have the black and the blue peg, pop them straight on there with the plug facing up. Same on the side here. So there is our uh, uh, sensors mounted. So step number eight, we're gonna add some cables and some extra retaining clips. So we're going to need two more short cables, one, two, two little pegs, and then two bushings. So these are like the little yellow ones, but they're longer. They're four bushings. And so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take these bushings and slide them down those axles. And while you're pushing that down, you hold the axle from underneath so it doesn't come out. So now that sensor is attached in there. Um, then we're going to attach our cables for our line sensors. So put a short cable in there and then plug it into the nearest plug. So in this case, this is plug port number four. And this one here is going to go into port number one. That's done. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add these little black pegs to the ends of the white L's, but facing down. So they're going to attach our, our robot catcher to the front. And there you have step number eight. And two more steps to go. Step nine, we're gonna build our robot catcher for the front of the robot. So we need a long beam. We need our two remaining L's. And these are the gray ones. The color really doesn't matter, but it's nice to have them in pairs. And we're gonna need four small black pegs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble these. So we're gonna put, we're gonna hold them with the long sides towards each other and then put the short pegs in on the ends and then we're going to take this piece here and mount it on the top so if you have a look at that the l's are on the table the white is on top the l's are pointing uh, they're on the inside pointing towards me so now when we bring the robot in we can just take these two pegs here and mount them in the next pair of available holes in the white beam now, if you can't fit this beam on here because it hits the sensors, it means that you got the position of these red pieces in the wrong place. You put them one hole too far uh, forward, so the sensors are too far forward. So if you can't mount this because the beam hits these sensors, you need to take off the red piece, take out the, the two pegs, and move it back one. Okay? So that is step number nine complete. So the last thing we have is step number ten. And step number 10 is simply mounting the cables for the motors and then putting in some cute retaining clips so that we can uh, hold them without getting them caught. So we need two of the three beams, six of the blue pegs, and your long cables. So each side is done the same. So one way to do it, you take the cable, plug it in the motor, you lay it flat, you run it down between those two uh, mounting post and then you push the, the blue peg in long in first while you hold the cable down. It won't go all the way in but now the cable doesn't come out. So then we can plug that into the nearest plug. So in this case this motor goes into motor D and then what we do is we hold the cable against the side of the robot in the middle of these three holes. Put two blue pegs in and put a red piece on top and just push it down. That keeps that cable in place so it won't flap around. So now we'll just do the same thing to the other side. In at the top, lay it down, put the cable in, 
lay it on the flat, put these pegs in, and down she goes. At which point you have a ready to go EV3 Sugobot.